grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. It is so good to see you all this morning. Microphone. Okay. Okay. Well, I've got a few announcements I want to lift up this morning. Actually, several announcements. Uh, there's announcements listed on the back of your bulletin. If you look there and make note of those, uh, for lunch, and then we'll meet from one until about two thirty. Uh, men's breakfast. Dale, are you going to share about the men's breakfast this yeah, Saturday? Yeah, men's breakfast. Kind of need to get a little bit of a number there. Uh, we're going to have pancake, sausage, and bacon. Uh, and it'll be great because I'm cooking. <laughs> well, Brother Brad's going to help you. Stay home. Stay home, young yeah. As Bob Johnson would say, I don't know about that. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Hope you guys will join us Saturday, 8 o'clock. Coffee will be on early. So, Ross and Susan, good to see y'all. We're back home. We yeah. miss you. So, uh, so, be here Saturday, man. It's going to be a wonderful time. Uh, we've got a trip planned on the 22nd of October, Saturday the 22nd, for our children and youth. We're going to be going down to the Pumpkin Patch in Mayflower. So, parents of children and youth, you're welcome to go with us. It's going to be a fun day. Uh, we're going to go down at about 1 o'clock uh, Saturday. And then the 23rd is Children and Youth Sabbath. The children and youth will be leading our worship service on that Sunday. I'm excited about that. Um, that is a United Methodist Women or United Women in Faith uh, service. So uh, be here on the 23rd and you will be blessed. I think we've got three youth who volunteered. To, but you never know. So uh, Bo, Case, and Hunter. We'll be preaching. Is that right? You guys still on board? <laughs> and they volunteered to do that. Pretty awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I want to lift up and just give a shout out to our United Women in Faith, United Methodist Women. They made a $2,500 contribution to the WOLF program. Uh, this past week, which is awesome. Uh, the Wolf program uh, through, I believe it's the junior high and high school, is that correct? Uh, that money goes to provide snack foods, toiletries for uh, uh, and so ladies, thank you for your generous contribution and uh, I'll tell you, we've got great Methodist men and women, and they do whatever they need to do to take care of folks in this community, and it's a blessing to see them live out their faith in a way that truly transforms lives. And, uh, there are so many involved in the school as well, so many folks, school employees, who care about the children and who wonderful to see that. Um, I want to mention the mission envelopes that you may have seen on your way in. I don't know if Joe Mel passed any of those out. Philip is standing in the back uh, holding those up. Kind of looks like Vanna White a little bit. Uh, yeah. So these mission envelopes, we have folks who give to missions every Sunday, and we wanted to make it easier for you to, to channel those offerings. So we're providing mission envelopes. And all of the money that comes in through the missions, these envelopes will go into local missions, go towards local missions. And so we've got a fund, a local missions fund, and whatever you give here is going to go right back out into the community, either through our church or through the Ministerial Alliance, which is a group of churches in our community, uh, churches that work together, Baptist, Assembly of God, non-denominational, Methodist, we all come together to help people in our community. This is an opportunity for you to be a part of it. Uh, I want to encourage you to think about giving one dollar a week. If we just did that, if each person gave a dollar a week to local missions, we could make a tremendous impact, continue making a tremendous impact. 
Our group on Sunday, October 30th. So Mary Edwards and I will be facilitating that group, co-facilitating that group. And so I'm excited about that and the opportunity for another small group and for folks to just be able to come together and walk with each other through very difficult times. And we're going to reach out to the community and invite folks from the community to come in and be a part of that group. Any other announcements we need to lift up this morning? Yes, we're going to hide it and then take it. Okay, this is not the true announcement. I know that last week we did birthday, and I don't think Mr. Powell could hear us, and he is going to be 98 years old on Tuesday. He needs a little special. to the front. <laughs> All right, as most of you hopefully remember that October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and so today we celebrate Pastor Brad. We have some beautiful flowers in honor of him. We have taken up a love offering. If you haven't given, the beautiful gold box is in the back, so if you want This love offering for we appreciate him, Kelly, the girls so much, and I do believe they're going on a little trip on the twenty third. So thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, and the flowers are beautiful. Thank you all very much. We are blessed to be in ministry with you. I say that often, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You all are a tremendous blessing to us in so many ways. I do want to welcome those who are watching on Facebook Live. We're glad you are joining us in worship this morning, and you are a part of our church family as well. And so we pray that you would experience God's grace and peace in a very powerful way through this time of worship. Let us now open our hearts and our minds as we enter into this. Okay. This is the day the like yeah there. Story about the elephant. I mean, don't you have another story to prove your point? I've heard it like three times this year. Yeah, I said, not even funny. Maybe I should fill out one of those comment cards. It's not like I'm asking all that much. I come here every Sunday or so for some coffee, fellowship, and and theologically sound and historically accurate every week. Maybe I am asking too much. Probably way too much. I mean, 
pastor did visit Joe in the hospital and celebrated with us when Michelle was born and was there when Susan lost her mom and encouraged me to fight for my family when we were on the brink of separation. Now that I think about it, pastor's been like a counselor, a mentor, and a friend when I needed it the most. Pastors are awesome. Go ahead, Pastor. Tell that story again. I'll even laugh this time. I was sort of feeling convicted at the beginning of that video. I almost threw my sermon out. I feel much better now. Please join with me in our prayer of confession. Patient Lord, you know how easy it is for us to whine and complain bitterly about all those things in our lives that are difficult. We focus on them as though they were the only things that ever happened to us, forgetting the many blessings that you have given to us and the opportunities you give us to serve you. We feel alienated, you call us beloved. We feel lost, you seek us. We feel broken and battered, your love is a healing bond. Forgive us when we forget those things. Help us to always look to you for our healing and to return thanks to you by praise and serving others in your name. For we offer this prayer of confession of our failures and gratitude for your blessings. Amen. Turn again to the Lord, for you are beloved of God and have been given many blessings. Rejoice in God's love for you. Amen. And now please stand in body or in spirit and join with me in our call to worship. The words are on the screen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you people. Open your hearts to the warmth of God's voices. Let our praise bring to the rafters and the city of the Amen. Now please remain standing and join with me in our opening hymn, Only Trust Him, number 337 in our hymnals. The words are on the screen.
believe we have children coming down for children's time. Good morning, boy and girls. How are y'all? Good. Good. It's good to see you at church today. Do you have a? Were you all here for Sunday school? I think most of you were. Okay. Had a good time in Sunday school. I saw there was some drawing going on and painting. Yeah. All right. Well, what do I have sitting here next to me? A box. A box. Is it empty? Yeah, it is, isn't it? What do we use boxes for? Holding stuff with, like, putting them in a trash. Right, holding stuff, using them. And like, if we're going to take some trash out, we might put it in the box and take it to the trash can, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I use boxes for storage. We've got a lot of boxes still that have stuff in them that we're storing. Uh, from when... We moved here a year and three or four months ago, right? <laughs> Kelly, we need to get on that. Those <laughs> when we're moving to a new town or a new home, um, couldn't get a whole lot in this box, could we? No, probably just what I've got. Probably like Christmas present. Yeah, Christmas present too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, today I'm going to be talking about the Israelites and how they had to move to a new land. King Nebuchadnezzar uh, and his army invaded the land of the Israelites. And they had to grab everything they could and take it with them. And that means they had to leave a lot of stuff behind because they didn't have much time and they were forced to move quickly. And they weren't given a moving van or anything like that. So they had to leave a lot of stuff behind. And it wasn't very pleasant for them. It wasn't a very pleasant experience. And so And they wondered how they were going to worship God because they didn't have their temple with them and, and some of their friends were gone and their homes and so they really struggled with this move. But Jeremiah, who was a prophet, came and talked to them or told them that God would always be with them and that they should just make the best of their situation where they were and to continue, go on, continue on living where they were, and to worship God because God was still with them. And so that's what I want y'all to hear today, that no matter where you go, no matter what you do in life, God is always with you, and God will never leave you. And that's a wonderful promise we have uh, through the Bible, which teaches us over and over again, from front to back, that God loves us and that God is always with us. And so we don't have to be afraid when things change. Maybe we move to a new house or a new school or anything like that. God is still with us and God will give us the strength and the need uh, to make it. Okay? Did that hurt? No? Okay. All right. Let's pray. God, thank you for these kids and for the love you have for them. And we pray, God, that you would bless and keep them, that you would give us all a good day here at church. And may we rest knowing that you are a God who is always with us. And, and so may these kids experience your grace and your love. And we give you thanks for showing us through friends and family and through Jesus. Pray in his name. Amen. Jesus, text for my sermon today is from Jeremiah chapter 29, 
Jeremiah chapter 29. I'll be reading verse 1 and then verses 4 through 7. And today I am thanking God once again for this fair set of readers. Uh, I have misplaced my glasses. And these readers are absolutely necessary. I miss my bifocals. I never imagined I would say that one day. <laughs> Many of you can relate. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1, starting with verse 1. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. And then skipping over to verse 4, reading down to verse 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. The welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. This is the good news for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Oh God, speak through me or in spite of me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On the move for the largest portion of my life. Growing up an Air Force brat, packing up every three or four years and moving to a new city, that was my life. I grew up that way. I loved it. And as I look back, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was a wonderful experience. And then a few years later, I answered the call to ministry and the life as an itinerant United Methodist preacher. And you know how that goes, right? Right? Packing up and going whenever the bishop says go. I was talking to a good friend the other day about how nice it is being home. And it is truly amazing how God has helped me to feel at home wherever I've been. Growing up a military brat and now as an itinerant preacher. God has just blessed me with good people in my life. And... It is something that I'm very thankful for. But we were talking and a song came to my mind, a song that came out not too terribly long ago. And the title of the song is I've Got No Roots by Alice Merton. Some of you may be familiar with that song. Anyone heard of that song, I've Got No Roots? I would sing it for you, but... <laughs> I've Got No Roots. It's kind of my theme song as a, an itinerant Methodist preacher. And we talk about that song. It's got a catchy tune, and the lyrics really do capture the life experience of most pastors, not just United Methodists. It goes like this. I like digging holes and hiding things inside them. When I grow old, I hope I won't forget to find them. Because I've got memories and travel like gypsies in the night. I build a home and wait for someone to tear it down, then pack it up in boxes, head for the next town. Running, because I've got memories and travel like gypsies in the night. And a thousand times I've seen this road, a thousand times. And here's the chorus. I've got no roots, but my home was never on the ground. I've got no roots, but my home was never on the ground. I've got no roots. Yeah, it goes on like that. 
I like standing still, boy. That's just a wishful plan. Ask me where I come from, I'll say a different land. But I've got memories and travel like gypsies in the night. I count gates and numbers, then play the guessing game. It's just the place that changes. The rest is still the same. Isn't that beautiful? That really spoke to me. It's just the place that changes. The rest is still the same. But I've got memories and travel like gypsies in the night. And a thousand times I've seen this road. A thousand times I've got no roots, but my home is never on the ground. I've got no roots, but my home is never on the ground. I've got no roots. Sounds better when Alice Burton sings it. It's a fun song. But that one line, it's just the place that changes. The rest is the same. I think this is what the prophet Jeremiah is trying to get across to the Israelites who find themselves living in exile once again, questioning their roots. The first exile, they are living in bondage under Pharaoh, and now they are living in Babylon. I, I know they were questioning and wondering about their roots. Where is home? We're on the road again. Another great song by Dean Willie Nelson. Nelson. Their nation had ceased to exist. And as one commentator said, the glory years of Saul, David, and Solomon were now only shop-worn tales told by bearded scribes and hoary elders. There was no Israel now, no Judah, no nothing. Who were they? Their identity had been stripped from them. How were they to worship without a temple? How were they to build a community when their community had been scattered? Many in their community died along the way or were killed as they were conquered by Nebuchadnezzar. Along comes Jeremiah, instructing them essentially to bloom where they are planted, to, to think of it as God sending them to Babylon. Isn't that powerful when we start thinking about how where we are might be God's way of using us to help others and to build up? rather than wallowing in our sorrow and grief that the life that we're comfortable with has changed, Jeremiah gives them these prophetic words of blooming where they are planted, embracing the life that they are living now, not thinking too much about the past or dreaming too much about the future, but living, capturing the, the now and living in the moment and continuing to serve God as God's people, to, continuing, to continue being who they are. Don't plan on moving. Build a life where you are. The scripture tells us, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. What challenging words from the prophet Jeremiah. What a powerful message for the church today and each of us in our own lives. Sometimes the circumstances we find ourselves in are not the best circumstances. Sometimes life changes and it's uncomfortable, isn't it? But the reality is that life is always changing. Our circumstances are always changing. I remember growing up in a couple of churches that began talking about buying property and moving to new parts of town, 
because the neighborhood around the church was going down. There were people moving into the church who didn't look like them. You know what I mean. And so they felt like they would do better ministry, I guess, in a community of folks in an area in that town where everyone looked the same. It still goes on today. Crime goes up around the church. Certain people move in and the church is ready to make an exodus, to leave back to the promised land of security and comfort when God just might be saying, stay where you are. Stay where you are. I have you here for a reason. And that reason is to bless the people around you, to, to build up the welfare of the land, right, that you are in. Perhaps God is saying, be my people wherever you are, even, as, even if you feel as if you are in a strange land. I am still God, and I am still with you. See, the place doesn't matter. In the words of Alice Burton from the song, it's just the place that changes. The rest is the same. As I was thinking about our text, I thought about how so often we put limits on God. Just as the Israelites couldn't imagine God's presence in Babylon, we too think we will find more of God in certain places in certain churches or with certain people. But God is bigger than that. There is nowhere we can go that God is not already there. So the place may change, but the rest is still the same. God is still God. The Holy Spirit is still moving in our world today. And Jesus still saves there's nothing we can go through where God is not already present, ready to shower us with grace and peace, ready to help us flourish wherever we are, regardless of our circumstances. And I think about the struggles we face in life when we find ourselves in a new place, a new life, new experiences, new challenges, maybe a new diagnosis from the doctor, right? Maybe we feel like we're in captivity. We've been sent to Babylon. How are we going to worship God in the midst of this? We can decide how we are going to live a meaningful life within the situation rather than outside the situation. So often we pray for deliverance, but maybe we can experience God in the midst of whatever it is we're going through. I don't believe God brings bad things on us. I don't believe that's God's will or God's desire at all just to teach us a lesson? Really? I don't think God works like that. But I think God can use terrible situations and terrible circumstances and terrible experiences, those terrible things that we go through, and God can sanctify and make whole those situations and bring life out of them. Timothy Merrill said, the Israelites wished they still had a temple, but they didn't. They wished they still lived in the walls of Jerusalem, but they didn't. They wished they could drink wine from their own vineyards, but they couldn't. Jeremiah tells them they must build a bridge and get over it. They must accept the reality that they are where they are and stop crying and whining about not being where they want to be. Right? I'm guilty. When things aren't going well, a lot of times I will wallow in my sorrow and even question God. Do y'all ever do that or am I the only one? Why, God, have you brought me to this place? Not this place. I love being here. I'm getting wrong. Did you give me that on the Yes, you did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why am I here? Why do I feel like I'm in exile? Why, where are you, God? I can't worship you 
when my heart is so heavy and I'm filled with sorrow? And God says, feel those feelings. It's normal. It's okay. But never doubt that I can do something in your life where you are for your welfare and for the welfare of those around you. So rejoice. I'm a God who never leaves, who never forsakes, who never abandons. I believe that's the message Jeremiah had for the Israelites. Even though you're in exile, once again, God has proven to be faithful in the past. And God will be faithful in the present and in the future. Do not doubt God's faithfulness. Jeremiah is telling them they must make peace with their situation and live as if God had called them to that place. Imagine the power they have living in the midst of their enemies to show them the light of their God. The God who has been faithful to them. Don't you imagine there were some conversations between captives and captors about faith? I can imagine there probably were. And I can imagine that the Israelites were a great witness to their captors. I believe that is the good news for us today. Wherever we are, whatever we are facing, God is with us. And though our circumstances may be uncomfortable, unpleasant, painful, God will not abandon us. And God can use us in whatever those circumstances are to bring hope and peace and life to those around us. God has called us here. And God will continue to work through us if we would embrace the call to live as faithful disciples of Jesus wherever we are. We have roots. I even have roots. As an itinerant United Methodist pastor, I have roots. Our roots are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our roots are in a faithful God who desires that we simply trust and live our lives serving Christ and serving others. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. Stand in body or in spirit and join with me as we affirm our faith. Words of the Apostles' Creed are on the screen. Let us join together. I believe in God, the Father of all the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the earth, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God, the Father of all the for many shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Concerns, share your joys if you feel you would like to do that as well, and then we will go to the Lord together in prayer. Yes, Mary. Thank you, Mary, Donna, and Fairfield Bay. Don't know her last name, but we will be lifting her up. 
Dale. Yes, I, I don't know the young man's name, but I believe the uh, clock strikes uh, quarterback had his leg broken. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, the name is in his name. Oh, wow. I think there were a couple other injuries in that game, too. So pray for, pray for him, especially, and the others. Yes. Jerry Clark. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. Family of Jerry Clark. Okay. Is that Carol? Yes. Uh, Larry Bittlers has been under the weather for several weeks and they don't look long and they just break away. Okay. <coughs> Larry's not feeling well. We will be looking him up. I think I saw Tony. Um, I would like to lift up Bowman Jones. It's Captain Bowman Jones. Bonda's brother? It's Bonda's brother. Okay. Bowen Jones. Others? Yes, Lori? Yes. Richard McCormick, Mayor McCormick's mother passed away last week, so I remember the end of her prayers. Other prayer concerns? Yes, Dan? Yeah, also for Officer Solomon, his, his father passed away. Who was that? Solomon. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Other prayer concerns? There are several listed and some we have lifted up this morning, listed in your bulletins. And I encourage you to take your bulletin with you and lift up these names throughout the week and go to God in your prayers and lift each one up. If there are no others, let us pray together. Lord of all creation, we know your heart aches for all who suffer. Sometimes it seems the only thing we can do is pray. And there are times when we don't even know how to pray or what to say. Sometimes it seems all we can do is keep the suffering in our thoughts. We ask you, faithful God, to meet us in this sanctuary, in this moment as we let go and silently lift up our hearts and our concerns to you. God of mercy, you have called us to stand with the sick, the grieving, the excluded, the outsider, the sinner, and the poor. Grant us the strength of your spirit to follow Jesus, to those who need to experience your healing mercies and grace. Grant us the courage to stand with those who are demonized as we remember Jesus standing with the demonized until the demonizing stopped. Grant us your peace, peace in our own lives, peace in our homes, in our community. There's hatred and division. We pray for healing and reconciliation. And may that work of healing and reconciliation begin with us. Where there is hunger and poverty, we ask that your light would shine through us so that others will experience your grace. Jesus Christ, our Lord, we are one with you. Renew in us the spirit of hope as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom in the power and glory forever. Amen. Now as people forgiven and reconciled with one another, let us bring ourselves and our gifts to God. Will the ushers please come forward for tithes and offerings? 
Ask that you would bless and multiply these gifts and that they would be used to bring the light of Christ to our community and beyond. In Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Finley to come forward at this time. Yeah, Billy, would you come forward as well? Oh, she's on her way. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to have Billy standing down here with me, or Herb, and Billy, soon to be Billy. Herb, Herb is such a blessing uh, to this church and has been for so long, and, and uh, you don't see him on Tuesdays or Thursdays, but he provides meals occasionally at the thrift shop for the volunteers, and and it's such a blessing in so, so many other ways. And he would like to join our church today. Uh, he was baptized, Herb, you were baptized last, yeah, last, last year. And so I'm excited to welcome Herb into our congregation and this wonderful congregation of United Methodist Christians. And so uh, if you would, turn in your hymnals to page 33 and follow along with me. You've got a part to play as well in this as the church. But brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so I present um, Herb Finley, uh, who comes to this congregation to be a member of here at Clinton First United Methodist Church. And so, Herb, I want to ask you a few questions. Um, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so say I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful, members of Christ's church, Christ's holy church, and serve as Christ's representatives in the world, if so say I would. 
Now to you, congregation. Do you as Christ's body of the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with the community of love and forgiveness, that he may grow in the trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for your hands and you will make a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. I don't have my glasses, so it's taking me a little while to work through this. I'm sorry. As a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I do. Now the congregation. I'm on number 16, I believe it is here. Members of the household of God, I commend this person to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith Confirm his hope and perfect him in love. We give Amen. thanks for all of this church. We are in our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministry of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, and our having everything that I may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory. Welcome to this part of the family. You may greet her. I'm going to ask him to stand at the back of the sanctuary with me as we leave in just a few moments. Uh, we've already got her nominated to serve on a committee. So. <laughs> Thanks be to God. It is to be a part of the family of God. Now, as we prepare to leave, I invite you to stand as you are, well, you're going to have to stand to leave anyway, I guess, so let us all stand together. I'm really knocking it out of the park today. <laughs> let us all stand together and sing our closing hymn, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 5, the words are on the water. Make the sign of the cross on your forehead with the water, but take this time and reflect on the call of Christ, the invitation to be a disciple as you walk through the doors of the church and go back out into our community and the world. Let us lift our voices together.